Flight Boss, bitch, you know, for sure. You're not listening to the mind of an Terry Smith, Flight Boss, the Archangel Uriel, and I'm here to carry out God duties and motherfucking responsibilities. And right now, I want to talk about. Let's talk about, cause I get I get a lot of these questions. So yeah, I understand I got a lot of new subscribers. So a lot of people ain't got time to filter through a lot of the videos just to see me talk about the third eye. So we got people. Um, a lot. I got a lot of requests of people wanting me to talk about the third eye. Now the third eye, I like to call it the first eye. Um, you got a lot of eyes, but when we say the third eye, this is one of the first eyes you created. One of the first organs. One of the first glands. Right. So it sits within. Right. So it's that little. That little thing in the middle of your brain that they want to call the pineal gland and things of that nature. Now, when we get all these concepts of people being woke or people having an awakened third eye. So what is an awakened third eye? Now, this is what you need to understand. When we talk about the first eye, the third eye, whatever you want to call it, the, the pineal gland, whatever. This is something, everything you hear us talk about or anybody talk about is things that we do every day. You just have another person who got another for, another shape or form or another way of talking about it. Um, or another person who got a more lost way of talking about it. But it's all the same shit. And the, and the more indoctrinated or the more lost you are in, into that surface level shit, the more you develop more concepts on it to yourself. And this is what hinder you and be blind into that concept and not be able to see it with clairvoyance. It's almost like you in muggy water with no chlorine. So you kind of you just in that flow, but you, you got no direction in that flow. So you need others who appear to have direction in that flow to actually know where you're swimming. But I'm going to help everybody have their own goggles. So when you look at things like um, when you look at things like. Um, the third eye. Now, look, this is something we do every day. It's just your ability to realize something. So, uh, so how you will look at a person who got a calcified third eye, but you're not into metaphysics, you're not into the new age, so you're not into the quote-unquote the terms third eye, then this is a person who don't use their pineal gland or a person who don't use it, this is a person who's not consciously aware of a lot of things. They're they're not they don't realize a lot of things so it's a person who could be in a situation but they don't realize what's actually going on in the situation they don't realize the behind the scene realm the alternative motive the behind the scene the, the lifting of the veil so these are people who could be gullible be taken advantage of real easy and be used as a pawn real easy so we talk about a person that's almost like when you're safe you're in a relationship right and you you realize what's actually going on but based upon what your partner is saying and their actions whatever they say in their actions always make you cover up and justify what you realize now you realize your partner is cheating but based upon what your partner is telling you and how your partner is acting when 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 you start to ask questions and stuff you let them put you in a space that you need to start justifying what you already realize. Now, this will now if you keep participating in that circumstance and situation and keep playing dumb, then you are a person with a calcified third eye. Now, if you are a person who's like, "Nah, fuck that," and you choose to bring to the light what was in the dark and show what you are consciously aware of, show what you actually realize was beneath the surface, then you are a person who's have an open third eye. See, it's just your ability to realize shit. You know what I'm saying? So we have to start making sense and common sense out of everything. The same, the same shit with the tree of life shit. The tree of life, right? Now, when you look at the tree of life, the, the, that, the term itself automatically doesn't make sense because there's no such thing as life or death. It's just transformation, transportation, transition, right? But this whole life and death uh, concepts came from light and dark. So just re just replace life with light and just replace uh, death with dark. That's basically what it all going to boil down to at the end of the day. So, um, and this is where they used to correlate the sun bringing life and when the sun go down, this brings death and they used to bring it, put add a lot of rhetoric to that shit as ancients. But for the most part, when you look at the tree of life, like I said, replace life with light and replace uh, death with dark. So for the most part, when we say tree of life, that means a tree in the external realm, in the yang realm. So that was someone who was observing, observing ex the external life around them 
and they came to the realization that okay things grow the same way how a tree grow so this is where the concept of the tree of life came from because someone was observing the yang realm the external realm and realized that everything grows like a tree so this is where you get the concept of the little mapping out because once we start to understand everything grows like a tree we know trees come from a seed so now we have to so since the seed was first we start to correlate with our seed so then at the top this is where you get um, uh, mental mentalism you know what I'm saying so this is dealing with the mental we know the mental was first because anything you choose to do as a physical body in a human the the first thing you think you, the first thing you do is you have the thought first right so then that's that will be the first circle that we put right then we start to we start to break it down then what comes after the thought right then we got uh we got it's it's a lot of them we got mentalism you it, you got um vibration um you got like rhythm you got uh you got um it, it, and it goes down the line with all the ones that we do. One after one after one. You know, so I could break it down right here, but that ain't what this video is about. So for the most part, you know, we just have to make sense out of things. We're not even talking about the tree of death. We're talking about the tree of life. And the tree of life is just a tree that's in the light. You know what I'm saying? And when we see how everything grows into the light, this is how we came up with the tree of life. And how we broke it down and things of that nature. So that's even dealing with the, if you want to know about the, the spirit, right? What it, what is, what's the difference between a spirit and a soul, right? Now, the soul is a spirit, but the soul is an individual spirit. So it's an, it's an extension or detachment or separation from an overall spiritual travel. You know what I'm saying? So you could be amongst a bunch of other spirits, but if you're going along that concept and idea without having your own individual outlook, your own individual position in that travel, then you just are one with the spirit. But just being spirit, you could be gullible. So just being spiritual in general, you could become a gullible person, right? And thinking and be getting the spirit from any other spirit that know how to be an individual, which is a soul. So it's your ability to become an individual spirit, which is a soul, Therefore, you have your own outlook on this spiritual travel, and you're able to see things from your position, your perspective. So that's what a soul is. A soul is an individual spirit. So once you become an individual spirit, you are a soul. It takes a soul to move through a body. So the spirits rely in the frequency realm, and then they vibrate together, which creates the a person to have their own individual outlook at a spiritual travel. So this is when a spirit gets to vibrate, so now this is an individual spirit, which is a soul. And it, it gets, it's shapeless, formless. It gets to move, have motion, have time, experience. And it gets to create shapes and forms and lights, which is bodies, to go into to experience that realm of reality, which is nothing but a form of light and information and shape and forms, a.k.a. experiences. So, you know, um, that's what your soul is. So when you put, when you tap into the spirit... It's like you connecting your soul back with the one of a spirit. Now, you need to pay attention. Now, it's a bunch of different spirits out here. Now, just because you into Christianity and you into Jesus Christ, you think you're talking to an overall spirit. No, that's one specific spirit. And if that wasn't the case, it wouldn't be many different religions. So, if there's many different religions, that means there's many different ideas. And if there's many different ideas, that means there's many different minds. And if there's many different minds, that means there's many different spirits. And if there's spirits out here that's taking many different types of bodies, that's many different outlooks. So, it's their proof in existence showing you that there's many different the, uh, theologies. So if you going towards just one Christian and you want to say Christian, the Christian God created all that, then you putting a lot of bearing on that one spirit. You see what I'm saying? And you just a follower spirit in general. But for the most part, you need to understand that you could be getting led somewhere that you don't want to be. And a lot of Christians get led into darkness, get led into um, areas of needing salvation or needing saved or, or, or needing to justify their trials and tribulations. And who put you in them trials and tribulations in the first place? You see, you got to think about that. So, you know, when you got to, you just got to make... This is how you truly have a, a open third eye, realizing the behind the scenes of everything. It's basically, it's basically not caring about the shape and form or the letters or the language or what's being explained, not caring about the lights in front of you, not caring about the book or the words. It's caring about what's actually happening. 
what is it actually doing? When you do hear the words, when you see it put into play, what is that spirit doing? What vibration is that spirit putting people in? Is it rising the vibration of your spirit? Or is it putting you in low spirits? Is it making you feel down? Do it make you feel happy? See, that's what I'm saying. It, it goes deep to this shit. So you could be a spiritual hater. You could be a spiritual flip-flopper. Flip you could be a spiritual junkie. You could be a spiritual fake motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? A spiritual fake motherfucker is a, is a spirit who jumped from spirit to spirit to spirit to spirit. A.K.A. through the physical body, it'll be, it'll be looked at as a person who jumped from religion, 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 religion. Then once they figure out all of them bullshit, they dibble and dab from all of them to try to use what's right when they ain't really have to be in none of them for the first place. That's a, that's a, a religious uh, flunky. You know what I'm saying? You just you just hopping around, hopping around. It's the same way in the physical realm. You know what I'm saying? A spiritual junkie is a person who needs a spiritual drug addict. They need things in the spirit realm to keep them high. You know? So, in, uh, Jesus Christ might got some spiritual crack. You know what I'm saying? Um, Krishna might got some spiritual crack. You know what I'm saying? So these are people who don't practice what they preach. Spiritual junkies don't practice what they preach. But every time they go through a circumstance or situation or experience in their life, they got to run to these motherfucker figures that got that spiritual crack for them. As soon as they get that spiritual crack, run into these motherfuckers, they, they go back to doing what they're doing again that put them in circumstances to need that spiritual crack again. So that's a spiritual junkie. You know what I'm saying? See, these motherfucker oversouls is hustlers too. You got to know that. They people just like you. Maybe just in a higher life. Some of these motherfuckers in a lower life. Some of these motherfuckers is, is just a being with a cell within you that's vibrating high as hell. Spirit vibrating high as hell. But he's just a spirit within a, 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 a blood cell in you. So he control, he control all your actions from within you. Nick, nigga gonna reach the egg real fast and you, he gonna, he gonna become all, every being in you. As soon as you bust a nut out and then go into a woman, right? He's the first motherfucker in there. Now, I'm not saying he gonna be the first motherfucker to reach the eggs in the same way for the, you females. You might got a, a, a motherfucking badass high vibrational spirit in you that just taking one blood cell and all your motherfucking body uh, other blood cells and shit following that motherfucker. So whatever idea he got is shit that you do. So you might be craving ice cream and craving shit like that. So the moment that you get pregnant with another world, that, that other world that helps combine things together, right? Then that might be the spirit that that kill the mother put this that one blood sperm cell from the man that came in there kill that cell transform then take another cell and that might be the motherfucker that reached the egg see it's a lot of different ways you can reach the egg just just because the the semen is just part of the world the sperm cells within it is spirits that could be in there but those not necessarily the ones that be reaching the egg all the time you see what i'm saying Sometimes it be the it be the development of a what woman a woman got already, and she just need the the earth particle, which is the the, the semen particle, which is that her blood cells could attach to to, to survive in that for a little bit, so they can. It's a this is a lot of different ways, but for the most part, um, yeah, you know, you can have a powerful spirit in you and make you do whatever the fuck uh, uh you want to do. So you got to be very careful when you talk about the spirit. You have negative spirits around you, um, and spirits always have bodies so you know the lighter the, the lighter the body the more inexperienced and more chaotic the spirit is and the more reckless reckless the spirit is so if you got a chaotic life you got you might you might attract a bunch of baby spirits or spirits that just just came in this realm of reality that need a body real fast so they don't they're gonna love those chaotic type scenarios and keep create and keep helping you manifest that in your life to the point that just Based upon your transformation, your life and death is the point is dependent on them coming in and experiencing. You know what I'm saying? So you got to keep that in mind. But it's like using a sense with everything. And once you start to use your common sense, you you can't say the spirit is not real. But you also can't tie the spirit to no physical shape or form. Nothing physical. The spirit only rides these things. They ride bodies of light, ride, ride bodies of fluid, ride bodies of cells. You see what I'm saying? But the spirit is truly not in this realm. The spirit is, when when you get an individual spirit, now that's when you become a soul. Now that's when you need to search for, you in the astral realm, and you need to search for certain lights, a.k.a. bodies, certain realms of realities. That's a, body, a, a few bodies of light interacting with each other in certain ways, creating orbs that that shape and form could be density and high density, non-physical and physical. When once you take one of those forms, those gas bodies and things of that nature, you can start your process with starting to experience that realm of reality in shapes and forms, in, in lights, in prisms. You see what I'm saying? Which the light is nothing but an illusion. This is why people get confused with thinking also that the spirit is the physical in some way, shape, or form. Because they don't understand that reality and the physical 
is the illusion and they so tied to it it's the illusion but they understand when you see somebody die they don't take the physical with them but they still praying that they that this person is somewhere what is you praying to if you know the person is in the ground you see what i'm saying so you know the essence of that person was was not the physical form was not the light you know the essence of that person was the actual spirit but uh flight boss bitch goddamn air ee -hee.